Hi, my name is Vita Damianitis. I am the Director of Worldwide Sales and Sales Development for the JAMA Network. Um, the JAMA Network is um, part of the American Medical Association. We are just down the street. Uh, if you walk two blocks west of here, you'll see our building. So um, you can wave at us. Uh, we publish JAMA, which is our flagship title, 11 specialty titles, and we just launched our first fully open access title, uh, JAMA Network Open, just two weeks ago. Um, when I first started at, the JAMA, at JAMA about 18 years ago, there were really two revenue streams for the journals. It was advertising and print circulation. Um, editorial kind of had a love-hate relationship with advertising. They liked the revenue that came from it. They didn't really like the idea of advertising because for a medical journal, it's primarily pharmaceutical companies, so they always kept that kind of at arm's length. Um, and there really wasn't a lot of need for interaction on getting print subscriptions. It was a lot of direct mail back in the day. We worked with subscription agents to get institutional print, and no one really knew what people were reading. It was you know, we just knew how many sales we had. Um, and over the time, every, the landscape's changed. Everything's online. Site licensing eventually surpassed advertising revenue. The revenue mix changed. Editors could really see what people were reading, um, what institutions were important. So the conversation between the publishing arm or the revenue side of the of the floor and the editorial side kind of started breaking down and a lot of conversations started happening. Um, and over time, you know, we started talking to one another and they did, you know, editorial started stepping up and being willing to see where they could help sales. And we do do some really typical things um, together. Editorial often um, comes to important institutions, both from the site licensing side and often to some of our um, advertising customers to talk to them. Um, there's a lot of coordination on different policy on how much free content we offer on our journals, um, advertising rules, different things that could impact revenue in different ways. Um, and our editors are really good about finding different ways to promote um, the titles within their own institutions and researchers within their institutions as well. Um, but one of the things when Heather kind of talked to me about this that I, you know, thought of uh, to talk about in this presentation was the conversations we started having with editorial kind of started leading into us talking about new products that we can do. It wasn't just them helping us build revenue on current products, but is there something new that we can develop? Um, one of the things that kind of came out of that just recently was our, our new journal, JAMA Network Open. Um, when we've launched journals in the past, editorial would come to our publisher, you know, let them know that they wanted to start a new journal. We'd go through an exercise of figuring out if it was financially viable and then make the decision of whether to launch it or not. Um, with Chama Network Open, it was a little bit different because both sides came together and they both had needs. Um, from the editorial side, edit editorial was kind of facing situations where they were turning away really good articles that they just didn't have room to publish in the current journals. Um, but they were also f uh, facing pressure from a lot of funding organizations and uh, authors being forced to publish in open access titles. Um, on the flip side, on the publishing side, we're also aware of you know, the funders requiring open access, and we really did not have experience in that. Um, you know, no one fully knows what's going to happen in the next several years, and we really wanted to make sure that we knew that we can operate in an open access world if we could. And so this was kind of a really, the journal kind of came out of a need on both sides. Editorial needed the content on the business side. We really needed to figure out how we could be agnostic with our business model. Um, the other product we've just recently developed is JAMA Network Listen. Um, I think it's been talked about in a few presentations so far today. Um, 
And it's something, you know, we started really looking at a lot of statistics of what's being used heavily within our journals over the last several years. And we realized, um, in our editorial department, really quickly realized that usage of our podcast was skyrocketing. Um, they started increasing the amount of podcasts they were developing. Um, and at the same time, the publishing side was trying to figure out how we could increase um, use and sales of our CME. Um, you know, once again, there started to be conversations of what can we do together, um, how can we make this work? I think a lot of people, especially in, in um, medical journals, know that CME tends to be something that doctors do in December, or sometime between Christmas and New Year's, they kind of go online and they take a whole bunch of CME to make sure they've got the credits they need. Um, and we had some doctors saying, you know, hey, young people are really listening to podcasts. They're not reading. They're already listening to these podcasts on their way to work or when they're working out. And the conversation started happening with our product development department. Can we do something with these podcasts, add CME, and actually create a different workflow around the entire process, which pretty much led to the development of this new product that launched just a few months ago. Um, it's worked well so far. We're waiting to see, um, you know, how the full conversion is going to work. But these are just a few examples and how conversations with them can kind of serve the needs of both kind of editorial and as well as growing revenue and sales on the publishing side.